Welcome to the Dog Nerd Show, where we geek out over our best friends. I'm Megan. And I'm Michael, and this is a show about all things dog. Today, we learn all about the Irish Wolfhound. Yeah, we want to we help you learn about different breeds and see which one's right for you. Or just geek out by learning about all the different breeds out there. Our goal is to make the world better for dogs, so less of them end up in shelters, and that's why we're here. So let's, let's learn a little bit about the Irish Wolfhound and see why it might be Megan's spirit animal. So we are here with Jen, and we are talking Irish wolfhounds today. So being a tall human being myself, <laughs> I always love, yeah, can you see the difference here? <laughs> I'm six feet tall. So as a woman, that's tall. And um, when I see these taller breeds, you know, I just think they're so majestic. Um, and I've, I've met a couple. In fact, there was one Irish wolfhound we actually did an interview with, um, but it was at a a pet event and it was so noisy with all of what there was a band playing that the audio just wasn't great to use on the show. So we've been dying to get an Irish Wolfhound episode out. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, Jen, you said you've had Irish Wolfhounds for how long? Nearly 50 years. I got my first Wolfhound back in 74, I think. Wow. And I've had some lean years with no wolfhounds, but um, but I've pretty much had wolfhounds since then. That's wow. amazing. And so well, my breed. That, yeah, yeah. And we connected because you also have a border terrier. So you do super fantastic. So you know we we can relate to having you know terrier people get each other. <laughs> so um, we'll jump into the questions first. So. Seeing such a large dog, how much exercise do Irish wolfhounds need? I, I would say moderate and a moderate amount. They, a good free run a day in an enclosed fenced area um, is usually enough. Okay. And if you can't do that, we'll, you know, we'll do leash walks a couple of times a day, a, okay. a decent length one. Um, we're pretty good here. We've got a nice enclosed area for everybody. We can't do the whole property it, but um and the puppies i don't trust yet but <laughs> but the older females will go out off lead and they can have a good run wow. that's usually enough that's amazing yeah us tall people don't need a ton of exercise either <laughs> <laughs> and they don't and 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 one of them right now is laying on the sofa and they like to you know they like some free play but yeah, they're pretty good at, they're pretty mellow for the most part. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, so are they easily trainable? Y yes, I, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I, will, I would say they are. They're really intelligent, but they are like, um, if you teach, if you ask them to sit, three times and they sit three times and then you ask them to sit a fourth time they look at you like that you're really stupid because mm -hmm. I just showed you three times that I can do this so similar and, to a border terrier in that they're smart but they don't have to please you like a golden retriever and do it over and over and over exactly and they were they were bred to be independent hunters much like the borders are bred to go to ground and find it without that human connection. So they, they're just independent thinkers in that sense. They're usually pretty easy to potty train. They're pretty clean. Um, so I, I would say that they're easily trainable. Okay. But I know people that don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's about the trainer. Oh, and I think you said in your notes too, it has to be positive reinforcement training, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're really sensitive and just you can look at them cross and they're like i'm sorry Gosh, so you know, they sound like my spirit animal they sound <laughs> a lot like i am <laughs> you won't sound in your future <laughs> um so having had terriers and i see uh dickens behind oh. you um sorry how... <laughs> no, no. To see the wolfhounds but the one wolfhound's on the couch <laughs> <laughs> um do they bark a lot N no, I mean, they'll alert if somebody, if somebody pulls in a drive or somebody 
we're very rural where we're at. And so if somebody drives down the road slow, they let us know, but inside they're pretty quiet. Okay. So I don't know if your border terrier is a big barker, but ours are. So that's a question that I think is important to ask. (laughs) It is. And actually they, they howl. Wolfhounds are howlers and they talk. I don't, I mean, they'll rah, 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 back to you, uh-huh. right. and but they don't have that. I mean, other than the size of them and their bark, they're not ear piercing barks like the border <laughs> is. That's good. That's good to know. Yeah, that there's there is a note that science has not yet been able to determine, <laughs> and that's the border terrier bark. The octave <laughs> of the border terrier. Yeah. So. If, yeah, the decibels are. Yeah, they need to be measured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so are they a shed? Do they shed a lot? Are you constantly, you know, having to keep up with a lot of fur? They they're a double coated breed. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a soft undercoat and a and a coarse wiry outer coat. I mean, they shed like pretty much any breed. There's just a lot more of them to shed. Yeah. So. Right it's if you have five of them which we do you're it's a vacuum everyday situation if yeah i would imagine what's the what's the grooming like um for just maintenance we a good brushing a good thorough brushing once or twice a week is is good enough to keep them tidy if you're going to show them um it's their hand stripped like a border okay and and you've got to strip their ears and which nobody likes and yeah um but that's a lot more intensive but for just the average you know person that has a companion animal just a good brushing a couple times a week and so do you strip them i do um i actually try and do what they call rolling the coat Mm -hmm. um just anytime I'm out with them outside, I'll pull some hairs off of them. Right. The, but I don't really strip them down as much as some show people do. I don't like that naked look. Right. Them. But I do strip the ears down. And that's what they hate the most. But for right now in the winter, um, they're pretty woolly. I can, I can imagine how long it would take to strip oh, it would take an forever. Irish because it, it, it takes me a whole day to do a border i can only imagine how long it takes to do it do yeah you- it i mean it's it's hard generally a lot of people strip the puppy coat when it gets to be a certain age they completely strip out the coat which is supposedly encourages the proper coat to grow right. in and I just never do that. Part of that's just, I don't not it's not necessarily laziness, but it's just hard with puppies mm-hmm. and I can strip their coat when they're older. Some blow coat, some don't. Um, but I, I just, I don't know. I'm just not very good about it. <laughs> so, um, being that they're large dogs, how much space do they need? Well, we're, we have five they need room to stretch out if they so want to which they do roll on their backs but i mean we've got five in 800 square foot apartment (laughs) wow (laughs) and well we've got it's above a 2000 square foot shop and we've got acres so yeah but yeah but when we go to bed at night most or even most of the time when we're up here they're here they're they want to be with us. So they all have, you know, there'll be two on the love seat and a couple in beds and then somebody on our bed and somebody laying in the kitchen. So they all seem, they all seem fine. I mean, I've got friends in um, Manhattan that has three or two, excuse me, she just lost one of hers, two wolfhounds. Um, and they do fine in small spaces as well as a normal sized home. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Cause you know, I guess you would think they need more space, but since they're not crazy active, then, you know, that, that works and you've got quite a bit of space for them, you know, to run around in, which is we, great. we do. And, and it's funny because 
Dickens will get everybody wound up occasionally. And, and it's, we've got kind of a galley kitchen that comes into the area that I, our living area that I'm in now, and they'll just run back and forth and back and forth. And it, it he's the one that gets them going. So yeah. sounds are pretty mellow. So pretty. Yeah. He's like, we need some action. And they're like, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so, what are the most common health issues that people see or, or, or should be prepared for when they uh, encounter this breed? I'm going to say number one is osteosarcoma is bone cancer. Mm. Um, heart disease is another bloat and torsion is a concern mm -hmm. with any deep chested breed right. um, and pneumonia. Oh, wow. I think um, our, but Osteosarcoma is probably the number one. Did I read about liver shunt as well? That that's something? yes, that's for puppies. Okay. So all puppies generally that test isn't done until puppies are nine weeks old. So the breeder of the litter, it, it's a simple blood test. There's some fasting beforehand, and um, I won't go into that detail. But all the puppies are tested. It should be tested at nine weeks to eliminate that and and then they can go on to their homes at 10 to 12 weeks or so and that but was liver shunt, that will that's a death now yeah and that was something that i read uh, on the the irish wolfhound um page that you sent me was that puppies need to go home later than in you know we we all think oh eight weeks but that's not the case for wolfhounds right it, it isn't and one of the reasons is the is the shunt testing yeah. but the other one is they they grow incredibly fast but they mature slowly mm. and they really learn a lot from their mother and litter mates in those extra four weeks between eight or even the two at ten mm -hmm. um but for the most part they they just learn a lot and they grow so fast the puppies are generally a pound to a pound and a half at birth and by the time they go to their new homes at 12 weeks, they're close to 40 pounds. Wow. wow. <laughs> well, the pound, so, pound and a half was the, that's a pound. That's a, yeah. Yeah. I think about a pound of hamburger. I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not very big. So they grow fast, but they mature slowly. And it, it just is. They need that. Extra. The, they learn a lot. Yeah. Yeah. stay with their breeder do this is something that it doesn't have anything to do with the irish wolfhound but it has something to do with the deep chested uh breeds do you do you suggest that people get the stomach tacked when they uh do the uh neuter or spade well first of all wolfhounds we don't since they don't mat fully mature until they're close to two they're both their growth plates don't close until they've matured so we don't spay or neuter before that's happened mm -hmm. um and they generally females don't get their first season until they're well past one and i suppose that you could it doesn't i, I don't have any of mine tack but all my dogs are intact so uh but it it won't stop from bloating for the dog from bloating. It might stop from torsion. Mm -hmm. Right. But there's still too many questions about it. Yeah. And I would say to, to talk to your breeder, if you're going to do it first and then talk to your vet about it. Yeah. Cause the breeder knows their lines. If it's happened in the past, it's likely it could happen again with mm -hmm. offspring. So yeah, it's excellent advice. Yeah. What about average lifespan? I know the larger dogs, unfortunately, don't live as long. What uh, what do you guys see with the average lifespan? Six to eight Aww. years. <laughs> it's short. Um, I've had some go to nine and a half. I've found for me that seven is average. Okay. Uh, mm. So, yeah. So, What's your uh, favorite thing or characteristic about uh, the Irish Wolfhound? What drew, drew you to this breed 50 years ago? Well, actually, it was longer than that. <laughs> I met my first Wolfhounds when I was like four and a half in 
we were living near a beach in in Indiana and the beach that we went to all the time had a house on the dunes and they had wolfhounds and that's where I met my first wolfhounds um I would say they seek eye contact and they want to hold it most dogs if you look at them too long will look away they right it's intimidating wolfhounds seek that they they want to be and they seek physical contact as well they right. they want to be touching you so they're not a dog to get and go yeah you can go live in the dog house outside that's not for them we don't want anyone to do that <laughs> no we don't yeah. ours live in the lap of luxury so um but i i'd say that they're they're um they're tactile so they they will we call it clobber paw <laughs> yeah they're they i i would say that's that's probably that that they are so connected to to their humans yeah. they, they are intuitive and really connect with your moods and emotions so um they sound amazing they do they're, they're really hard. <laughs> they're wonderful. Awesome. i know this wasn't on our pre-questions but i do have one how do they do with other dogs because you know you think wolfhound and kind of what they were bred for how do, so how are their relationship with other dogs that they don't know obviously that's not part of their pack? generally it's very good um we've had labs with our wolfhounds in the past um and dickens and even going to dog shows or even a specialty is especially great when it's just showing wolfhounds um they everybody seems to get along fine even intact they we've had intact males here together right even and there's just they're generally just a good-natured being they yeah. pretty much just want to get along with everybody oh yeah. now um we didn't put this on the list but you you did comment back that we didn't ask you what your least favorite thing oh. <laughs> or characteristic was <laughs> excuse me um they don't mind stepping on your feet <laughs> at oh, yeah. all <laughs> and they really don't always have a sense of their size mm -hmm. and they so it yeah the, i've got constant bruises black eyes to, oh. you know <laughs> bit tongue because they just they throw themselves around at times without Real giving life. thought to it yeah. and and we've got a couple that will actually stand on your foot so you can't move <laughs> <laughs> and how to, and how heavy are they like so how much weight are we talking um for a male we're talking 185 pounds <laughs> oh wow, wow. And yeah. my, my, um, oldest female is probably 140. Wow. Wow. So it's, I mean, and it's, you know, the big feet have big claws, toenails and yeah. barefoot and all that. Yeah. It's a mess. It's, <laughs> my feet are bruised constantly. You got to get some steel toed boots to wear as your house shoes. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's it, what's it like to live with? you know what do you when you when you could sum it up in a short paragraph what's it like to live with with a uh, irish wolfhound that's a great question it's kind of like living with another human mm. they're interested and want to participate in pretty much everything that you're doing and they just have a way of looking at they they're smart so they I swear they know more than what they say dogs know a hundred words or what no they know everything we say <laughs> and but it's like living with another human to me wow. yeah yeah That's what one thing I wanted to know is as as a person that was that, that found these dogs is oh this is the dog I want but they've ne maybe never had a a dog or maybe never had a dog of any size. Maybe they had a family lap dog or whatever. Would an Irish wolfhound be a good first dog for somebody? That's a good question. It is a good question. <laughs> I, and you I can would say, say it depends if you, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, my inclination is no. Mm -hmm. Partially because they are such a sensitive, they really are sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, and you can really mess them up if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And, and if you, if it is your first dog, then you've really got to keep in contact with your breeder mm -hmm. because they'll walk, they're the ones that are going to walk you through everything. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to, yeah, I'm going to say no, no. Oh, yeah. Which is, which is totally fine too, because we've said, we don't think border terriers are a good first time dog for people, you know, I, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, you want a dog or do you want a dog? Uh, you know, like there's a difference. And so right. it really is important that people understand that. So thank you. Well, that. and if you'd like, let, if Katie, let me see if I can get one of my, well, Katie, she's not going to come. Katie, <laughs> get off the couch and come here and say hi, if that's okay. That would be wonderful. Come here, Katie. Love to see come Katie. Here. Come say, come show your pretty face. Come show them your pretty. Oh, 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 wow. She's gorgeous. This is Katie. She will be five in March. So she's Hi, going to gray. Oh. But um, yeah, she's, she is our needy dog. Yeah. <laughs> she's the needy one. She's like, and why didn't you ask me to come over sooner? <laughs> I, probably, but she was snoozing on the, she's like, I'm not going to lose my spot on the couch. Right. And, but no, they're just, she's got her head into my arm right now. She, oh. They're just, they're very sweet, oh. very sweet dogs. Well, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, I, I think I've seen two in my lifetime, probably. I saw one in front of a pet smart about 10 years ago. And then we saw the one at that event, which was a dog event. Oh my gosh. She is lovely. I, Look at I her. Know you really realize how big they are when she gets her head up next to yours. I mean, I can see why you have bruises because her and, head is huge. Yeah. And, and actually she's the, probably the middle sized girl, olive is bigger. And then, so, so we kept, we bred olive. We kept two of the puppies. We kept a male and a female and Silas is the biggest wolfhound I've ever had of males. He's huge. He's wow probably easily 37 at the shoulder wow and his head's i mean he's yeah he's way bigger wow, wow. 37 inches at the shoulder yeah so that's his shoulders counter height wow. wow so they can that's another thing to think about is how clean do you want your counters <laughs> 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 well, there's a benefit there too, isn't there? <laughs> well, especially after they run their drippy beard across it and you know, you wipe it down then. But it, you know, I mean, that's another thing for people to think about with a breed like this. Not only can he reach the back of the, he can almost reach the windowsill above the counter. Wow. He can reach the back of the stove. He can, so. You can't leave things, anything. Yeah. You, on the counter isn't enough. No. And, and I'm, we're constantly cleaning counters. Wow. Uh, because so if you're they like to the counter surf. Yeah. For, yeah. If you're OCD and you leave nothing out on your counters, this would be good, except for the fact that the fur and then the drippy beard and all of that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and even then there, even if they know that there's nothing on the counters, there might be something magically appear on the counter. I mean, it just doesn't matter. They, they'll yeah. counter surf no matter how clean you keep them they, uh, they're gonna look right. yeah so don't leave like a beer bottle sitting there because that'll get knocked over and broken it, it, it will yeah and so you really have to think clean so. up the puddle that they made with it yeah. so <laughs> and they're and they're you know they're since they do shed it's you if you like clean clothes don't get a wolf out no yeah yeah and, and, you know, we got, we've talked in previous episodes, my parents got Michael, which he says is the best birthday gift ever. One of those robot vacuums. And that thing changed our lives in terms of just cleaning up all the border terrier fur. Now it would probably have to do several passes, even, you know, in a small place to get all that wolfhound hair, but that thing helps immensely. <laughs> I, I've thought about it, but I think it would kill it. I mean, just it, it might, it might. I mean, it, you've got, you've got five, right? 
Yes. Yeah. yeah so. We have two border terriers. So, you know, and, <laughs> and it's, I think it's about a year old maybe. Yeah, so we're, so. we were curious too. We were like, will that even work for us? And, you know, I've thought about it and it, it might work in a small space, but there's dog beds everywhere. It would have to navigate. I mean, it's when it's probably good for a small space, but not necessarily ours. Yeah. Yeah. But it might be something to, to ask for a birthday present for us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, um, do you have any other questions? I, I don't, I just have a comment. Thank you for sharing to, uh, your, your experience with the Irish wolf found today. I know there's a lot of fans of this breed out there. And, uh, and I think it's exciting that we're able to get someone on that's got so much experience with them. So thank you for doing that. Thanks for inviting me. It's, it's great to be a spokesperson for the breed and we try wherever we can. When you have a dog like this, you go anywhere in public, you are representing the breed because everybody has to stop you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you're a great, uh, I appreciate great, that. Oh, you're just a great, uh, mouthpiece for the breed. I mean, it's clear how much you love this breed and, and to think that, you know, when you were four years old was your first experience. That's so cool. It was meant to be. It was I, definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Thank you. What a great interview. We hope you learned a lot about the Irish Wolfhound and potentially to see if it's the right dog for you. Yeah, one of the things that Jim forgot to mention and that it's it's important we point out is that it's it's critical that you have a fenced backyard for this breed. I, I, yeah, definitely. I think you should put that on your checklist, something to consider. Yeah, they're, they're bred to go after wolves, so that instinct is hardwired in there so that means they like to run and i i would love to see one just take off yeah so megan tell people why the irish wolfhound might be your spirit animal well gosh well when jen was describing the breed i was like is she describing me or the irish wolfhound so they're obviously tall and lanky and i know you can't tell from this I and mean, you can see i'm taller than this guy but i'm six feet tall uh quite a quite a long large wingspan and um and they're very sensitive yep and empathetic and and you know she was saying that they they know when you're feeling something and that's me so yeah i uh, i don't think this would be the right breed for me cuz they're so large i just don't know that that would work for our lifestyle but boy do they sound like my spirit animal <laughs> so Absolutely. i've got a new spirit animal well, yeah, folks, found. well, folks, we hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, hit the uh, subscribe button down there and the notification bell. We put these out every two weeks. We love it to, uh, you, when you send your comments in. So please send your comments in. And if you're listening to us on a podcast, please give us a review. That would help us a lot. Uh, once again, thank you so much. And Megan, can you tell people how they can get in touch with us? Yeah, so we're on social media everywhere at Dog Nerd Show. Website is dognerdshow.com. Drop us a line, dognerdshow at gmail.com if you'd like to be interviewed. And like Michael said, we love your comments. I love hearing about your dogs. So if you have an Irish wolfhound or you've had one in the past, let us know in the comments. And always let us know what you want to hear more of. Well, until next time, folks. Bye. Bye.